Maria Reza got convicted, Rappler got convicted of uh, cyber libel. And yeah. again, on my end, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I feel about it. Am I surprised or not? But let's start with what your thoughts are, Gino. Thoughts and feelings, huh? I don't think that she deserves to go to jail, uh, to be completely honest with you. Um, but let's, let's, re let's go back a little bit here and remember a couple of things. Number one, the, the crime that was supposed to have been committed was in back in 2012, if I'm not mistaken, or 13. Right. 12. So, it, okay, 12. It wasn't even this administration that was, that right. was uh, um, around when that thing happened. Now, um, the, the, it became the cyber libel, the crime, the anti, what do you call it? The, what's the actual term for it? The cyber libel cyber law. Cyber crime came, law, which is cyber libel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, came into be 2013, if I'm not mistaken, a year after. And then they, that, that article by, what's his name? Wilfred, no, the article that was targeting the company of Wilfred Kang, if I'm, yep. is that his name? Wilfred Kang? Yes, Wilfred well, I still, okay. I, I, feel, I still remember some of these facts, wow. Um, was rewritten the following year. But the only changes that were made were typos. It wasn't like, the, the facts didn't change or the, the facts that they came up with didn't change. The article the body of the article didn't change. And because it came out again in 2013 with that one change or two changes, but that typo lang yan, it's, it's, or a name change or something like that. Nothing, nothing super big. Yeah. Yeah. It fell under the date of uh, when it was a law already. And that's what they used in order to get her. So, uh, you know, People who are not, who are anti, who are, who are anti Rappler. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Rappler, but I'm not super anti Rappler also. Um, would, would say that, hey, you know, she committed this crime long time ago. She's paying the price. Okay. But if she wasn't so loud against this administration, would she have gotten, would, would, they, would they have gone after her uh, as hard? Because it was so, it, that, that crime was way back in 2012, 2013. Right, 2012. And before that, yeah, it was enacted. Yeah. And why is it that in the past, she's been, what, arrested several times already? Yes. So there's something to, I mean, hard facts, hard evidence, you may not be able to present it. And that's where the tricky part comes in, right? But the optics say otherwise. The optics say that it's because that she was super critical of this um, administration that that's the reason why they, you know, started pressing and yep. started and started uh, going after her. So w w the the problem though here is where's the hard like wh do you have the actual hard facts and hard evidence that that you can claim that I know. Duterte said it in, you know, in many uh, press conferences and, and whatnot. Um, but it's just that it's just like, how do you, how do you not see it for what it is? You um, know what I mean? How, how, how do you, how do yeah. you, how do you, because that I don't, I honestly, I mean, again, there's no hard evidence, hard facts, but I can't, I can't, I can't um, pinpoint or I can't like take something and, 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 and tell you that this is the reason why this is, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just so, so I, I would believe the optics more than the actual facts. Right. So ba basically what you're saying, Gino, is that you're having a hard time even seeing it any other way, considering yeah. all, everything that's in front of you. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's. Yeah, I actually, I've been trying. I, I, even if I tried, even if I tried, it is hard to believe otherwise what the government is saying because of the fact that they've already filed, what, seven or eight charges okay. against Rappler from hmm. the SEC to the BIR to, I mean, from ev using every government body to file a charge against Rappler and Maria Ressa. That, for me, says a lot. That 
and and this this cyber libel case is against a private citizen, but the private citizen mm -hmm. whose was it daughter or wife or relative or sister was appointed into his daughter. cabinet daughter i daughter. mean right uh, so th it just reeks with so much yeah. cronyism and abuse of power i mean like, all of it it's all there this is this is so like marcos era type of thing happening it is and and then you have all the trolls now coming out that's the, the new thing the trolls coming out supporting this attacking everyone against it and um, making it sound like this is a fair and legal thing to do. That's the hard part. Yeah. Because, again, if you look at the, what you can charge or what you can grab, the physical, the physical evidence, I hate to say it, it does point to that, right? If they... But if you look at the whole thing in its, in its entirety, it can't be. It's not just that. It's not just that, that, that one case. Yeah. So that, that's, my, that's just the, the way I see it. And because of that, that's why people are, they keep on saying that you have to defend press freedom because those, those are the people who, who see it that way as well. Yeah. That... Because now, don't get me wrong. Again, she like Rappler has had their own share of um, mistakes. They've had their own propaganda machine with that uh, YouTube <laughs> um, documentary that they came up with that the other day. That wasn't um, them. That was PBS. Yeah, but it was toward, It was just her voice. You know what I mean? It was just basically her. It was basically the voice of Rappler. Sure. It was it. You know it what I mean. It, it was. It was. It was from her, her, her perspective, but it was her perspective. Make, it doesn't make it wrong. It, yeah, but and that is, that's all I'm saying. It's it's right. almost like a compare a compare to the Last Dance of Michael Jordan. That documentary mm -hmm. th was through his eyes. Right. It wasn't through the eyes of everybody else that was part of it, like like Horace Grant or or sure. Scottie Pippen or whoever was rumored to not like that documentary. Fair enough. It was. Similar to that, right? Um, so they're not completely, they're not completely uh, without fault. Uh, you, the Rappler is not completely without fault. That's what no, you only. Said. That's what I yeah because they've like I, they've they've made mistakes in some of their in some of the stuff that they've put out there, and. I'm not saying that they made mistakes when it, they gave out facts when if the president said something or whatever, or, you know, so, I'm not saying that. I'm saying in general, like they've used pictures that have been, uh, that were, that were wrong. They've, you know, they, they've mistaken certain facts in some articles, not necessarily against the administration in, in, but in general. And it's because they use, it's because of the fact that they, they believe that it's better to get something out there first than to get something out there completely 100% correct. Right. And it was actually Maria who told me that. Okay. Of course, she, of course she didn't say, um, she didn't admit that, hey, we're, we're gonna, I'd rather get it out there first than, than, and with some mistakes and errors, then like, you know, then completely vet it and then, and then uh, come out before, or come out after some of the other, like the broadsheets or whatever would beat them to the punch. She knows, she, knows the, she knows how to get the, the, the clicks. She knows how to get it. Uh, both of them were uh, bosses of mine when I was in, on ANC. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, th I think of them with such high regard that I was honestly disappointed when they would come up with articles, not, not, again, not necessarily against the administration, just articles in general with facts that were, that were wrong. Okay. Let, let me ask so, you this question. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I want to ask you now. Yeah. Would you, would you say that uh, they came out with more right articles than they did wrong? Oh, fair? yeah. Oh, yeah. How, okay. uh, fair. Very By fair. By how much? By how much? What do you think? 90 plus I'd, percent? Correct? I'd say, I would say about 85 maybe. 85? You're saying yeah, about… Yeah, pretty high up. You're, but that's high about up there. 
So they're making three mistakes out of every 20 articles. Yeah. But it's still, it's still, yeah. because of, again, if this was not, if this was, if, if Rappler did not have the name Maria Reza and Glenda Gloria attached to it, then I wouldn't think of, I wouldn't think that, um, I wouldn't think that highly of them. Okay. But because they do, because they do, the standard is all, all, absolutely just goes up so much higher. Uh, absolutely. And, and because, and because of that, I wish that they would do it in a more, I, I know it's because it's a new medium, right? It's, it's relatively new and they want things out there as fast as possible. I know I get that. But the way that I always pictured, specifically Maria, Glenda to a certain extent, uh, I always pictured them to be such hardcore, true blue um, old school journalists that will, they will vet everything before putting something out there. But they kind of lost that to, for a certain, for, to a certain extent with this whole new medium that, that, that uh, people are using nowadays. Okay. Would you say that are they the only one that have made those mistakes? No, no, no. Okay. They're not the only so, ones. Inquirer. Yeah. Everybody uh, has. Everyone, everybody right? Has. Okay. Yeah. So, but, we but, not everybody, but not everybody has the name Maria Reza attached to it. Oh, but, but then again, come on. You have Inquirer with all those top journalists with all their names behind it. And also sure. with uh, Sina, sure. from the time of Sina, uh, Max Sullivan and all those guys. So sure. uh, for me, it's a sis. Yes, okay, they made mistakes. Yes, but everyone else has, correct? Yeah. To, to the same degree, correct? And, yeah. then you have, and then you have, and then you have the propaganda machine, the trolls, social media, influencers, <laughs> who have, would you say, made as much mistakes or more mistakes? More. 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 Absolutely. Much more, right? Yeah, because they don't have the journalistic background as, as some of the news outlets out there. Okay. And also the fact that, okay, so they've made much more mistakes. And there was this argument of, um, that I've been hearing from people that, uh, parang, oh, she deserves it. She, she uh, parang has bad intentions for this government. But then again, you see all these paid social media influencers of the government making worse claims, spewing out worse Hatred and vitriol. Are you gonna, are you gonna name any of them? <laughs> Let's just put them under one category: trolls. <laughs> I don't okay. have the protection of this government, uh, Gino. That's the thing. <laughs> if the government was on my back, maybe, but I don't have the government on my back, so. Might not be a good idea, as you know how it is right now. This is the third nail on that coffin. The first one, Inquirer. Mm -hmm. Having all the owners now have to sell a substantial share just to get some breathing room from this government. Next, yeah. ABS-CBN. With the ownership yeah. issue, the citizenship issue. And that this one has been going on since several years since this government took power. When you take all of those things into consideration, it obviously reeks of government abuse because you took all of those things into consideration. That's why I find it laughable. When I hear those people saying, no, it's law is the law. This is just because she is violating the law. It has nothing to do with Duterte. It has everything to do with Duterte. For you to believe that this is an isolated incident that is outside of the sphere of everything else happening, you're having selective perception. Mm. You, you are now trying to put everything in little pigeonholes, assuming that they're not really correlated to each other when they so are related yeah. in every manner okay. possible. L let me ask, because I actually see it, like I, like I told you a while ago, when you look at the entirety of everything, it's hard not to think that way, right? Yep. But it, just for argument, what you can prove is only these certain things. And it just so happens that ABS had some stuff in question, that PDI had some stuff in question, Rappler had some stuff in question. You know what I mean? So, but, so again, when you, so you, 
you can actually there's actual exam there's actually examples of 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 all these issues with these different companies, right? But again, if you look at the whole thing, sure, it's it's it I, it looks the optics of everything is would lead most people or a lot of people to believe what you just said. But the thing that you can prove is only these little factors, right? It's with hard evidence. You know, I think we're we're living in a time where we're we're in this massively bad toxic relationship with this government, and we're being gaslighted. Mm. To make you believe that what you believe is not true. And a lot of people are starting to doubt what they believe. I have seen so many people say now that I don't trust media. Wow. So, okay, I understand. You have, what, what I'm saying now is they're saying that because of what they're being fed. That media is all lies and everything. And now they're starting to say, I don't trust media. Okay, so if you don't trust media, who do you trust? Where do you get the news? The bloggers, eh? Uh, yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Oh, you, would you rather trust the bloggers? Would you rather trust a, honestly, there are some media publications that's just when I read them, I'm like, wow, it's laughable again. But people are so afraid to now say that they trust media because they're made to believe that what they are saying is completely wrong and they don't know what they're talking about and that they can't make a decision or they can't make the proper judgment by themselves. So basically, they're beginning to doubt their own perceptions and the way they see things and the way they, the way they analyze things. Na parang maybe my analysis isn't good enough, so I, I'm just not going to listen to anything. And that's, that's what's amazing with what this government is doing, is that it makes people doubt themselves. And that's scary. And I think that's why a lot of Filipinos are not speaking up. It's, you know... There's, you're, that's that's one thing, right? Like, it 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 puts some people out there, well, you know, with a cloud of doubt over their heads uh, regarding certain issues. Aside from that, it also feels like there's a divide. Maybe it's because of the where, the situation that we're in right now in this world. No, but but I've never seen so many people so divided all at yeah. the same time. And it's, you'd think during a pandemic like this, it should have brought people together. Yet it's doing the complete opposite. Well, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to unify a country when the people, the government leading it is trying sure. to divide it. Yeah, I'm because gonna you can, that. yeah, because you can divide and conquer. Yes. It's easier. And, and that's what, I'm sorry, but that is what the government is intent, intentionally doing. That's the thing. You look, at, look at, a great example is in the U.S. Thank God for, for people being still able to speak out. Thank God that they have a Congress and a Senate that kind of still works compared to ours, where people aren't afraid to speak out. And that's why the Black Lives Matter movement is thriving and it's gone all over the world. Because people, no matter what, will still see what they see and believe what they see and speak out against what they see. Here, you see it and you're made to believe that what you're seeing is not contextually correct. You will hear our president swearing, making all these stupid comments and jokes about killing and rape and, and people are made to believe that no, he didn't really mean it that way and people believe that propaganda. But at least in the States, even if you get that propaganda, people still have the presence of mind to make up their mind and decide, no, I saw what I saw and I'm making a decision. I'm making a stand. We just don't have that right now. And now with another media outlet being threatened with jail so that they can toe the line, now the gaslighting will get worse until you will start to believe an alternate universe that doesn't exist. And that's sad. And if you didn't see the documentary, you know, I mean, you didn't even have to see the documentary. All that footage, no, it, it, news footage, it's out there. By the way, yeah, everybody, everybody, it's it's well that everything that happened in the documentary was pretty much you've seen it, yeah, somewhere. And it's I just it just reminded you of what what's out there, and it's so sad for me. What the saddest part for me is seeing 
a few million of our kababayans who are watching these political figures who talk about nonsense. They sing and dance, literally sing and dance. And the crowd... <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know that. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen it. Without political discussion and just song and dance and the crowd goes wild. Idolicizing this person voting and it's, it is so sad. And then you see a person who really means well, who has the credentials, going out there talking to the public about issues that matter and the crowd doesn't give a fuck. And I say that in that way. They don't give a fuck. They literally look at the person and go, I don't know you. I'm not voting for you. But this guy sings, Alleluia, my savior in life. And now with the media being, this being done to the media, what are we left with? Even GME, I can tell from the way they're doing reports now, <laughs> they're scared of this government. Well, like news is supposed to be the, the watchdog, right? Yeah, of democracy, but yeah. we, and and it's the question is: Do we still live in a democracy, or did we ever? Did we ever? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think. Well, you know, at least there was at least there was a sense of um, trying to make it look like a democracy. Unlike now, it's a blatant abuse. It's almost like slapping in the, in the face that yeah, fuck democracy, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's what it feels like to me. This is a slap in our faces. And a, I'm going to do what I want and there's nothing you can do about it. And people are going to hate you for speaking out against me. Even though I'm saying bullshit, you speak out against me, people are going to hate you. And that's the problem. I feel like a part of my soul was crushed a little bit because of what happened. I'm not the one that went to jail. But for what happened, for what it is, for everything that's happening, this is just another slap in the face. And I, how much longer do we have to endure this? Two more years. At least. Yeah, at least. At the very least, it depends if the people are waking up or not. You know, like right during this whole pandemic, this, the, the lockdown and everything like that, that, what, that's been going on here, um, and we, we've seen like, you know, like it's, it's like the lower income bracket suffer a lot. Yes. Yes. And majority of the votes come from that yes. bracket. So would you think it's possible that when elections come along, they would actually listen and they, they would make the smarter vote or make the smarter choice choices and not just vote for somebody whose entire campaign is based on dancing and singing. Unfortunately, no, that's not going to happen. Why? There's why? Gonna, what, what, but, for, but why do you charisma. think that? It's charisma. People vote for charisma. People don't just, people never vote logically on a, on a general scale. Huh? Generally, people don't vote logically. They vote emotionally. Then they justify that choice logically. Okay. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. They'll, yeah. They made a decision here, and then they'll just try to make sense of their decision. And that's the sad part. And that's always been like that. And I think that's why the electoral system we have in the Philippines is not good. It's, it's, it's a terrible electoral system. <clears throat> because you're giving... You're, I, I'm going to sound really bad and I'm going to sound like somebody who's not for democracy. I am for democracy. But I do believe that it is hard. As a friend of mine said this. Why will you allow people that are, sink, like, that are helping the boat sink be the ones to elect who is going to be the captain of the ship? It doesn't make sense. They don't even know how to save themselves and you're asking them to, to decide who's going to save all of us. I would rather, and this is just me, and, I, and this is something that was suggested by several people already. I would rather that the people that pay taxes vote at least start from there. We start That's from fair. there. Okay? 
that's a good that's starting kind of, line. That's a that's kind of fair. Yeah, I, I mean, I've I've believed that. I've 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 believed that as well. Yeah, um, at, at but, least start somewhere, right? That that we can improve how people vote. It's not going to fix everything. But the other solution is the other solution is just to change the whole way of voting. The reason we're getting these leaders that we've been having for the last six years is because six years, excuse me, for the last since 1986 is because <laughs> it's true though. If you look at the, 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 the way we've been voting, right? Yeah. No, um, that, that's what, that's why I'm laughing because I mean, this thing has happened long ago, bro. Yeah. It's, it's just been that way. And it's, it's because sad. of our electoral system. Our electoral system allows for somebody who has the marginal vote. When I say marginal, mm -hmm. they're not the majority, but they just have the most out of six to ten candidates. Yeah. yeah. If we had, which can also fail, like you've seen in the States, but yeah. a one-to-one -one fight would be better. At least you get some sort of a majority. Mm. Fair. That for me is a better system. The best system for me is the ones that are in Canada, in Australia, in Europe, where you don't vote for a president. It is appointed by all the ministers that are represent, representing your district. And they're the ones who decide who's going to be running the country. I like that better because it's not based on popularity. And they know who the best leader is among themselves that can yeah. lead everyone collectively. Mm. This leading by popularity is just, it, it brings out people that can rile up the emotions, use fear as a way to, to create, you know, a necessity for their very existence. It's, it just is how it is, unfortunately. Chris, but we're talking about how long, how old, it's over 100 years it's things like the philippines has been around for 100 what now 100 well how, we're, how long how long has the philippines been a country um i don't remember how long now exactly but but i'll tell you this much 115 so probably there. but, but maybe about years there. but but more than that it's just that we've only been really able to start exercising our vote again 1986. True, okay, fair. So people still don't know how to, I don't think they understand how powerful they're but, voting. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but. And like, to, the, has, I think, if I'm not mistaken, has the, big, has, the, has the biggest percentage of any president in the past, what, 30 years, 20 years? Am I, is that correct or no? I'm sorry, the biggest voter turnout, you mean? No, I mean, he has the biggest percentage. Um, could oh, be him or Arab. But, but could be him or Arab. But look at, look, at, look at that, right? So what does that say to you, right? Doesn't mean anything to me. Hmm. So, so if the majority votes for this person, I mean, doesn't say anything to me. I'm glad yeah, I'm not one of that majority. Yeah, but that, that but I, I, that, that that majority is where the power is. Yes. Right. That's that's. But your but that whole analogy that you have of the people helping a boat sink. Choose the <laughs> choose the. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, think about it, bro. Um, there, the majority of, of Filipinos are having enough problems trying to decide what to eat for today or tomorrow. And they're asked to pick a leader of the country. They can't even figure out how to fix their lives. And they're asked to pick the leader of the land. That's the problem. Now, if this was a company, if this was a company you wouldn't be picking the people we've been picking. You would pick competent people, not based on charisma, but based on qualifications. But that's an ideal that I don't know if mm. we'll ever have. L l simple enough, even our senators. Come on, look at how our senators are composed of. You see how many legitimate lawmakers are there in that lawmaking body? <laughs> a boxer. How many? Actor, how, 
how many singers uh, and celebrities are there? <laughs> Listen, not, nothing against celebrities, huh? but, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why not vote for, for like an ex-justice, a lawyer, um, a human rights activist that, that, you know, with a background in, in law and people that really know how to, you know, do this rather than... Because, because they have big teeth that nobody likes to vote for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's really good, ah. Huh? he's really good. And that's what we need more of. And there are so many people in the past that should have been in the Senate that are not because maybe they're not good looking. They don't speak well. But but man, there are sharp minds that we need in in the Senate and in Congress. And really, the people in power are the people that represent who the majority of us are. Yeah. And that I, says a lot that, about well, our majority. That, that's, that's true. That, 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 is, that is true. And it's, but I, have you ever felt another time in your of, I don't want to say um, hopelessness, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Have you, have you ever felt? Yes. Have you ever felt uh, more? Yeah, uh, really? not, not more, but yes. Uh, hopeless, yes. Uh, during the time of Arab, I felt like we were in the dark ages. I felt like this was the dark times of the Philippines. Hindsight. Now, in hindsight, uh, being where we are now, I realized that wasn't bad. This is... Wow. This is almost as bad as the Marcos era. Almost as bad. And that's what scares me, where it's almost as bad and you see the, the mobs cheer. That's what's scary. Because in the Marcos era, people knew better. I think, I think people were more educated. I think there were more people that were educated, which led to the fight against it. But now, this were being dumbed down, gaslighted, incredibly Gas lighted incredibly efficiently. It's incredible. It is incredible that the people that are in the middle will tend to stay in the middle or even skew a little bit and give the government the leeway they need for fear of being labeled as a left or as somebody who complains too much. That's what scares me. Where do we go from here? What know. happens now? I, I, I've never... The reason why I asked you that question a while ago is because I have never felt this way in, 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 in the 40 years of my life. I've During never, the time of I've never, No. I was, uh, you I, was, I, was, I was living in the States. Um, but this is just not... You know, this is... It feels like it's really around the world. It's yes, not it just, is. yeah, right. It's not just here. It's yeah. it's. You look at the states. I mean, God, this, how are they gonna? This is a complete mess that's happening there. And Although I'm gonna say that the mess in the states, I like. No, yeah, there, <laughs> there, there, that that movement has been that needed to be done maybe over a hundred years ago. Absolutely. It took this long. Uh, it took it? a long time. It took a long yeah. time for something to happen. But I, it's just, there's just a sense of, but that's another one, right? Sidetrack a little bit here. That's, that's, a, that's another part in, in this thing that's happened in the States. That's another place that you can totally feel that they've been, they're really divided. But if you look at the entire country, it really feels like they're more divided now. Do you believe that they're more divided than us in the Philippines? I don't know. I don't think so. I actually saw a shift. I saw a shift in how people think in the States. I'll give you an example. <laughs> I love using hmm. Joe Rogan as an example because he's a big personality. He's a mouthpiece. Um, I, I told you I've been listening to Joe Rogan. Hey, yeah. at one point he was swinging Trump. Now yeah. I'm listening again. And now he's like, okay, Trump's <laughs> lost it. His Twitter should be stopped. 
he's Joe Rogan now has is now saying, yep, this is now gone to a point of insanity. Trump is see, this is why I, I like what's happening in the States versus what, what's happening in the Philippines. In the States, you see a president starting to lose it. People will notice. People will not gaslight it and tell you, no, 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 no. You're taking it out of context. But they've done. They've done that. No. But you can't deny what you see. And sometimes you will have to at least admit that here, maybe it's the lack of critical thinking and people don't, are, or either lack of critical thinking or the laziness to think. And that's what's causing the gaslighting that people are starting to believe that whatever is being thrown at them by the government. And that's the difference. Now, in the States right now, I, I actually think Trump's going to lose the next election, the, the one coming up, because yeah. of how he's handling the Black Lives Matter. That even the whites that were traditionally aligned with um, more of that evil past of the United States are now accepting that, hey, we got to change our ways. The Confederate flag is being taken down. Even in the NASCAR, the head of the NASCAR said, we're taking it down. It's not going to be allowed. And some racers are saying, we're not going to race anymore. And then they said, so be it. Don't race. Don't race. Because there are a lot of people lined up who want to race. Um, and then the uh, best example was um, football player, NFL, Kaepernick. Yeah. Taking the knee. Before, there was a lot of backlash against him taking the knee. People that were like, he's disrespecting the flag. Now everyone's taking that knee. Now he's absolved of all of those things that our people are bashing. People have apologized to him. Even the NFL has. That's how far it's gotten in terms of awareness and realizations. That they, the NFL made a public apology of their stance. When are, is that going to happen here in the Philippines? Have they still taken a stance? Because uh, Trump has said something about it, and I, I think Roger Goodell. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't uh, been updated with with that uh, as part of it. But go ahead. What, the NFL has taken a stance. The, N, uh, the NFL uh, head Mismo said he apologized for the way they handled Goodell, it. Goodell, that's right. Yeah, Roger yes. Goodell, their commissioner. Yes. He he said that specifically. Went on cam and said it, and how he wished he could have handled it better. Galeng, it was Galeng. It was. It was so emotional that so many NFL players were, wow, it, it was a powerful statement by the head of the NFL. You should, you should have seen how uh, even all the black, the black uh, NFL players stood up, spoke out. Amazing, amazing. Um, I, I wish we, were, we would have that chance in the Philippines to be able to do that. But I think people are very afraid. Because they see that our own Senate and Congress is not for the people. And they're afraid to speak up. They'd rather be a part of the problem than be a part of the solution. Because being a part of the solution means you have a chance to go to jail or die. But if you're a part of the problem, at least you're safe. You're going to get your money if you're paid by the government. You're going to get your projects. You're not going to be... The BIR or every other government agency is not going to go after you, so you'd rather be safe. Somebody did say to me, I'd rather keep quiet because it doesn't make me money to speak out against this government anyway. Who said it? I'm not going to tell you who said that. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> shit, we're, we're on cam. I'm not going to say that. But, <laughs> but people that are earning that are earning don't want their earnings to be affected so they'd rather just shut up say la vie that's how it is and then wait for the next government to, to go into power so here here's here's I'm, I'm gonna say this and i'm saying it with a little bit of sarcasm fuck a part of me was hoping that binay won na lang. <laughs> i swear to god as corrupt as he is at least he hindi hindi pa rin yung sobrang garapal na ganito eh. he could still kind of put the semblance of no 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 everything's working <laughs> you know I'm not gonna lie. I actually like Bina I'm not gonna lie <laughs> oh. <laughs> man I mean, no um, I like his I like his his kids are starting to grow on me the two girls Abby and Nancy Bina Abby Bina I'm, 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 I'm not anything bad to say about 
I'm I'm actually a Nancy fan, so N- Nancy. Uh, I actually like Na- Nancy. So Nancy, I um maybe I think she got bashed because she's a Binay. I hated mm. the fact that she got bashed because oh, she was dark skinned. I hated that, and I hated anyone, even if you're you don't think she's correct, to bash her and insult her based on her color. That pissed me off, because that doesn't add to the intellectual discussion to make us grow sure. and be better. It just sure. makes it worse for everyone. So, but Nancy, the way she has held herself in Senate, hey, huh? that's the better one compared yeah, to the I other like senators. It. She's probably on the top six, in my opinion. Top 10. So, I think top 10. I, I'm, I, I guess I'm a Nancy fan. Yeah. So, I don't know about being a fan, but much better yeah. than the other people that are on Senate right now. The, 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 the next 12 that, are, that just got elected? Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, Lord.